Bristow by Frank Dickens, featuring Michael Williams as Bristow and Rodney Bewes as Jones, with Owen Brenman, Dora Bryan, Joan Sims and Liz Fraser. The Power of the Press. Get me strong and strong fellow, please, Mary. <laughs> you are not Mary. I don't care who you are or why you are standing in for Mary. My dear, I am in a hurry and I have no time to listen to your breathless outpourings. Ah, Mr Downing, this is Bristow of the Chester Perry Buying Department. I sent you a letter yesterday. Ah, you received it. Excellent. What's that? You couldn't understand a word of it? Oh, well, that makes sense. I was in a playful mood when I wrote it. If you hold it up in front of a mirror... <laughs> Calm down, sir. We're not going to get anywhere by losing our temper. You are holding it up in front of a mirror, and it still doesn't make any sense. I see. I must have sent you the one in code. Code. Once again, it's not difficult if you know the key to the code. A equals M, B equals N, C equals O, D equals P, and so on. Yeah, of course I'm being serious. I clearly marked the letter urgent. You'll do what? Letter of complaint? Oh, if that's the way you feel, do it. A favour, though. Don't send one of those you have to hold over a candle. I received one last week and nearly burnt the place down. And the same to you with knobs on. As the late lamented Baron Lytton once wrote, the pen is mightier than the sword. And as I was mulling this over the other day in the buying department of the Chester Perry building where I work, I was approached by Hickford, editor of the Ferns House Journal. Here it is, <coughs> moments you have been waiting for. The bumper autumn number of the Chester Perry House Journal. And about time too. We're thinking of lighting a fire with it, unless they turn the central heating up to full capacity. This issue contains a special supplement featuring a list of the best-dressed men in the Chester Perry organisation. Oh, read it aloud. I want to savour every syllable. First... Sir Reginald Chester Perry, our beloved firm's founder, multimillionaire and business tycoon. Mm. Second, Robin Chester Perry, eldest son of our beloved firm's founder. Uh -huh. Third, Errol Chester Perry, second son of our beloved firm's founder. Uh -huh. Fourth, Master Charles Chester Perry, oh. two-year-old grandson of the firm's Get founder. Out, hold it. How long is this list? They are a big family. Hickford, you disappoint me sometimes. You have in your control an item powerful enough to change lives and influence people. And you waste this opportunity by writing such trivia as who is wearing what, who cares, who is even interested. So what would you have me write about? Sit down for a second. Pen and paper at the ready. <laughs> a few days ago, I was on the station at East Winchley. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Stationmaster, you've made me jump. I've been waiting on this platform so long, I thought the line had been discontinued. Yeah, the 8.15 commuter special is running late today. Yeah, funny thing, really. You have a train that sets out at a certain time to travel a set distance on rail. That is all it has to do, and yet it is always late. Has someone unbeknown to your good selves inserted an extra loop, or does it somehow disappear into a British high-speed Bermuda Triangle? If you have a complaint, it should be made through the proper channels. Bristow, these are complaints made daily in the national press. Oh. We are a house journal and we don't tackle large issues like transport. Uh, will you please allow me to finish? Uh, go on, but I'm a busy man. Uh, calm yourself, Hickford. The interesting part is about to be revealed. As I was about to launch into a swinging attack on British high-speed rail, I heard the unmistakable tones of Gert and Daisy. Uh. Two of Chester Perry's longest-serving cleaning ladies, who, standing behind me, had not recognised who it was that was giving the stationmaster such a hard time. Mm -hmm. That man's right. I think it's time someone told the truth about the disgraceful conditions what exist on this line. Lines, Gert, not line. Lines. You wouldn't send a pig to market under such conditions as exist on these lines. Yeah. It's time they were showed up in their true colours. Yeah. Gert? Daisy? Oh, Mr oh. Bristow. Mm. Daisy, look, it's Mr Bristow of the buying oh, department. Uh, oh, uh, you haven't seen us. What on earth are you ladies doing on the station at this time of the uh, morning? 
I thought as soon as you heard the cock crow three times, you downed tools and rushed home to bed. Shall we tell him, Days? Well, we might as well now. We've been caught on the job, as it were. Mm -hmm. He's bound to find out sooner or later, mm -hmm. so we might as well get it over mm -hmm. and done with. We are applying for a job with Miles and Rudge. Miles and Rudge. Yes. Ladies, have you taken leave of your senses? Work for that shower at Miles and Rudge? <laughs> How can you think of leaving Chester Perry's? The company that has made you what you are. And what is that? Look at us, Mr Bristow. What do you see? Mm. Two ladies in their prime? In their prime. Mm. Right. Who should be seen at first nights and nightclubs yeah. and dancing the nights away? Oh, salsa oh, or lambada? Salsa? I salsa or lambada? <laughs> salsa in the night away. That's what you should have said. All oh, right. Salsa or lambada. I wish you wouldn't interrupt me when I'm talking. Oh, sorry. Well... Uh. Anyway, mm. I was saying, what do you see but two ladies who spend their lives skibbying for other people? Skibbying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a polishing and a dusting old. What do you mean? It, it, it's taken from an old song. It was on a Monday morning old that I beheld my darling and old. Oh, a yes, yes. And a Where was I, Dave? You were telling him about us skibbying for other people. That's right. Sweeping, scrubbing, polishing, dusting. That's our life. And what do we get? Nothing, eh? Gert. Nothing. No, 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 no. But surely you earn the unspoken gratitude of those who arrive at work and see their desks and surrounds beautifully clean and wonderfully tidy. <laughs> Surely that unspoken gratitude is reward in itself. But that unspoken gratitude don't put food into the mouths of the children we struggle to bring up. Yeah. And why miles and rudge of all people? You are a person if person. you work for Gosh, miles yes. and rudge. They notice yes, you. But you are noticed at Chester Perry. Oh! I've often seen romantic messages for you from Stokes the caretaker, written in the dust on my desktop. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they are not exactly romantic, but what he lacks in flowery prose he makes up for in vigorous application. It's not that so much. It's the conditions at Miles and Roger so much better. Yeah. Oh, you've got me there. What do conditions mean to a cleaning lady? Everything. Yeah, that's right, isn't it, Days? Yep, everything. I, I see. And there, Hickford, is your story. Let us make things pleasant for the cleaning ladies that work here. Let us crusade for better conditions. Bristow, I don't know what to say. You have moved me greatly. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, God. I had no idea that you had such feelings. I have completely misread you all this time, ah. and to make up for it, mm -hmm. I will mention the idea came from you. As O. Henry remarked in his book, The Gift of the Magi, Life is made up of sobs, sniffles and smiles, with sniffles predominating. And I found out the truth of this the next morning, when I was taking my daily constitutional along the corridor and saw the lift boy about to take the lift down. Morning, lift boy. Going up. Room for a small one. Sorry, full. Yeah, full? But you've got no one in there. It's full to you. Permanent. Wait a minute, you insolent pup. What do you mean by that? Simply that if you want to go anywhere, you do it under your own steam. Mm -hmm. You aren't welcome in this lift, and I'm the one in charge. I say who comes and goes, and you ain't neither coming or going. What on earth has got into you? I had Mr Hickford in here earlier on. Yeah. He tells me you've suggested an article for the House Journal on the cleaning staff. That is correct. Well, there are more deserving cases than those gossiping old windbags that you apparently care for so much. I... There are other much more deserving cases than those... Lying, cheating, stealing hags. There are people like lift boys who spend their lives going up and down in an iron cage when they could be outside playing football and in general doing the things that growing lads are entitled to do with their young lives before they grow into old people like you. You can keep your rotten lift. To say that I was stunned is to put it mildly. And a few seconds later, I was even more astonished when I felt a sharp blow on my ankle. Oh, no. Out of the way! You need the whole corridor, do you? There's oh. other people in the building besides you, you know. Oh, Mrs. Purdy, whatever is the matter? 
Someone you fed disagreed with you? You know very well what's the matter with not only me, but every tea lady in the place. Going on to Mr Hickford about those two cleaning ladies doing a sterling job of work. Oh. Sterling job of work? Those two lying, cheating, stealing old bats that hanging's too good for. Yeah. Angels of mercy, are they? Go kick up the backside, that's what they need, a pair of them. What about us tea ladies? The ones that have to put up with all your snide remarks and turn the other cheek day after day, month in, month out, year in, year out. What about us? That's let you have credit when you haven't so much as a brass farthing to get you through to the end of the week. Sheer ingratitude, I call it. Singling them two out for special mention in the house journal. While us, the unsung people who gets on with their job regardless, never gets their name mentioned in anything. And now, if you wouldn't mind standing aside, I should like to get on with my duties. And with that, she swept off, giving me the look she reserves for a decaying rock cake. But worse was to come when I returned to my desk. Morning, Jones. Surprise, surprise. Stokes the caretaker. Mm. Morning, sir. I think you come to do something about the eating. Uh, not before time. We've been a-shivering since the last days of summer. Bristow, what's been going on? What have you been saying? Well, don't ask me, Jones. The place has gone mad. As I was saying, Mr. Cattaker, sir, we need an infusion of warmth into this icebox on our office. Oh, we need the red corpuscles to spring to life and start hurtling around these arctic bodies. Looking and listening to him now, Mr. Jones, it is obvious he is a troublemaker, born and bred. <laughs> huh? oh, I've seen him in my time, and this one comes pretty high on the list. It's in the eye. Blood there, all right. Bad blood. I'll say no more, lest I lose control. Bad blood there, and plenty of it. What's all that about? It's about you. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. What on earth have you been saying to Mr Hickford? He was in here just now, referring to you as the new messiah, come to save the world. The man is an idiot. I happen to mention the Gert and Daisy at the cleaning stuff. Oh, the Sisters of Sanitation. Hickford calls them. Oh, does he really? Sisters of Sanitation. <laughs> yeah, not bad. He has a nice way with words. He's wasted as editor of a house journal. He ought to be running the Times or something. Bristow, can you come down to Earth for a minute? Mm. You and your honeyed words of praise for the cleaning staff have caused all kinds of trouble all over the building. Yeah. Now, thanks to you, we've got no heating. Yeah, what? Stokes, the caretaker, is furious. I've had him in here for an hour. Complaining about his never having seen his name in print. No heating. Where's the hammer we keep to rectify the occasional heating failure? Don't cause any more trouble. We'll tell Fudge when he comes in. I don't know why you had to say anything about the cleaning ladies to Hickford in the first place. Because they are thinking of leaving us and going to work for Miles and Rudge. They can't. They mustn't. They're checking some of my invoicing at the moment. I know. I've got half a dozen orders they're trying to sort out. If the cleaning ladies go, there'll be all hell let loose. I've completely lost track of invoice DB341. That's not the one with the penalty clause. Uh, you are mad. Why did you give them that? It was getting too complicated. I thought a few fresh minds would help out. You better ask for them back. You could be in trouble <coughs> asking cleaning ladies to handle invoices where there's a penalty clause involved. Oh, I see. Suddenly it's you could be in trouble. I'm the one in the hot seat. You seem to be saying it's nothing to do with you. Let me remind you, it was your idea in the first place to ask them for advice. Advice? Yes. But it seems to me they are handling the bulk of your work these days. They are not handling the bulk. They are helping out on one or two things, that's all. Morning, all. Now, what's going on? I've been getting black looks from all and sundry ever since I got in this morning. Morning, Hewitt. It's all Bristow's fault. Yep. You better ask him. I want nothing to do with him. Will you please tell me what's going on? It's too long to tell, and you are too young to know. Oh, for heaven's sake. It concerns Gert and Daisy, the cleaners. Why? What about them? They're not happy with conditions here, and are thinking of getting a job with Miles and Drudge. They can't do that. Oh, of course they can. It's a free country. And if they don't like the conditions... I mentioned this to Hickford, and he's thinking of doing a piece in the House Journal about them. Hewitt, you have paled beneath your tan. Is anything wrong? Mr. Bristow, 
There is something wrong. Mm. Sometimes, when I am stuck with a particularly complicated piece of paperwork... Say no more. You don't understand. They bring a fresh mind to bear on me. That's right. A new pair of eyes. My boy, yours is not a solitary case. Other people who cannot be named, because he's out of the room at the moment, are in a similar position to that of your own. What's he going to do? He has asked me to assist him. I have suggested, or rather, I'm about to suggest that a meeting be set up between the interested parties uh-huh. so that an amicable solution can be reached. Yes. Aha, Mr Jones. I have acquainted Hewitt with the facts and find that he is in a similar situation regarding Gert and Daisy. Fresh minds, new pair of eyes. Uh, excuse me. Hello, Bristow speaking. What do you mean I'm not welcome in the canteen anymore? I'm not responsible for anything Mr Hickford says. And I would never have called them the pollution solution. That must have come from Mr. Higford. He has a way with words. I know you girls in the canteen are underrated and underpaid, but it's nothing to do with me. It's... Okay. Be like that, then. We've got trouble, my friends. We've got to get in touch with the cleaning ladies and discuss the prison situation. On the one hand, we've got the rank and file of the workers threatening to boycott us because we have... Hold on. Um, Hold on. Where did this we come from? Uh, it's you that's spreading waves. Uh, Nothing to do with me. I've just been sitting quietly at my desk, passing the time of day, and you've been rushing around like a whirling dervish, working everyone up into a frenzy. OK, we won't argue. We'll arrange a meeting with the cleaning ladies. We'll leave a message written in the dust on your desktop. Write this down. Write this down? Just like that? I don't take orders from you. Write it down yourself. Whatever next. Come on, Hewitt. Come on. We're out of here. I'll be asking us to clean his shoes next. Oh. Oh, I don't know why I bother myself sometimes. I'm surrounded by cretins. Still, let's get the show on the road. Now then, uh, to the desktop. For the attention of the cleaning lady. No, too formal. Dear girls... <laughs> too friendly. Don't want them getting ideas about their station. Why, well, dear ladies, uh, no, wait. Mr. Bristow, mm? you must be the most caring of men. Uh, Miss Sunman, you will never fail to surprise me. Suggesting to Mr. Hickford that the House Journal does an article on the cleaning ladies. A wonderful idea. Whatever made you think of that? This morning on the station, I met Gert and Daisy. The aforementioned cleaning ladies who informed me they had applied for a job with Miles and Rudge, <gasps> the firm across the street. But they can't. Miss Sunman, there is a note of real concern in your voice. Dare I mention fresh minds? Fresh minds? New pair of eyes? New pair of eyes? Oh, thank heavens. I thought you might be caught up in the tide of events. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> No. No, the reason I was shaken is because the girls in our office buy a lot of their wonderful knitwear. Mm. Their scarves, gloves and jumpers are ideal for Christmas presents and we play some rather large orders. Uh. I think I'd better go and warn the girls there might be a hitch. Right. The trouble with leaving a message on a desktop is that it is so easily read by anyone happening to be passing. Therefore, no names at all in case any management figure sees it. Simply, therefore, something succinct... And directly to the point. Imperative. We meet soonest possible. Ah, perfect. Morning, station master. If you come to inquire about the 8.15 commuter special, I have to tell you its whereabouts are shrouded in mystery. Uh, why is that? The new winter schedule came into operation at midnight, and it caught everyone off guard. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, it's very complicated. Mm. What does surprise me, though, is that it's the first time I've ever heard the word guard used on this station. And coming from someone gainfully employed by a company connected, however loosely with transportation, it comes as a pleasant shock. Hmm? I also thought I heard the word schedule mentioned. There is a vague sort of system you operate, then. It's not just sheer coincidence that one train desperately tries to follow the one in front. If you have a complaint... No, I merely wanted to ask whether you had seen the two cleaning ladies I was talking to yesterday morning. Uh, There was here, sir, and caught an earlier train. 
It did cross my mind, sir, that if the ladies wanted employment, British High Speed Rail have a cleaning department, if <laughs> you get my meaning. I shall pass the message on. But judging by the erratic movements of your trains, I doubt they'd know what time to report for work. When I arrived at work, I found, to my delight, a reply to my letter of the previous day written on my desktop. Have you seen this, Jones? Back of the bicycle sheds, uh, noon. What the devil are they playing at? This is a delicate matter, Jones, and may well serve as a basis for future negotiations. You don't mean to say you're going? We are going. You, myself and Hewitt. They have paperwork that should not by rights be in their possession. We need that paperwork. But why there? Why noon? I was not to wonder why. Que sera, sera, as Miss Doris Day would say. <laughs> must be out of our minds. Two grown-up men and a child. I am not a child. And a child lurking in the bushes behind the bicycle sheds, waiting to meet two cleaning ladies. What happens if the... Shh! Hello? Hello? Stokes? Stokes? Is that you, Stokes? Mr Jones, what are you doing here? And what are the other two doing here? We might ask you the very same question. Well, I can't um, can't see the... uh, uh, check the uh, bicycle. Don't fence with me, Stokes. You came because the message written in the dust on my desk top was from the cleaning ladies. Well? It was a simple trap, and you fell for it. Shame on you. You're a dirty old man. And we'll spread the word around unless our heating is back on full this afternoon. Bad blood you got. Bad blood. I told you we were wasting our time. Hist! Hello? Hello? Mr Bristow? Daisy? No, it's Gert. We would have spoken sooner, but we heard you talking to Stokesy. Uh, He gives me the creeps, that Stokesy. Creep? Uh, We've come about the paperwork. Those invoices and that? Have you got them? Of course we ain't. We don't carry them about with us. We brought the woolies, though. The woolies? Yeah. Woolies? Woolies? (laughs) What the devil is she talking about? Calm yourself, Jones. I'll explain later. Now, listen, Gert. It's rather important we get hold of the paperwork. The railway station tomorrow morning, Platform 3. Platform 3? we got to go. Yeah, but, but, We're doing the board from this afternoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bristow, I am a patient man, as a rule, but... Que sera, sera, Jones. I don't know what it means, but I second it. This is ridiculous. Having to wake up as early as this to go and meet a couple of cleaning ladies. I suppose we've only got ourselves to blame for getting into this situation. It's nothing to do with us not knowing our jobs, of course. It's just that it's rather convenient to have a fresh set of minds and a new pair of eyes on hand when the situation demands it. What we have to be very careful of here, and I have thought this matter through, is that we do not get on the wrong side of these ladies, causing a hitch in any proceedings that might make them think twice about handing over the necessary documents for. If it ever got out that we had been assisted in the execution of our duties by cleaning staff, it might cause a few eyebrows to be raised on management level. Bristow, Mm. we must be out of our minds. Two grown men and a child. I am not a child. And a child waiting for two cleaning ladies on a deserted railway station at the crack of dawn. Yeah, but don't go on about it, Jones. Que sera, sera, to quote the estimable Doris Day again. Here they come now. You'd better let me do all the talking. Good morning, ladies. Oh, good Good morning, morning, gentlemen. gentlemen. And thank you for mentioning us to Mr Hickford. Oh. He was on to us yesterday. How's the article coming along? He's going to call us the Apple Pie Girls because we keep everything in Apple Pie order. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the article is coming along because it is out of my hands. Can we get back to the paperwork again? Now that you are thinking of leaving us, it is necessary for it to be returned. It's not much, as I recall. Oh, one or two 
little items. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say invoice DB347 was a little item. Uh, it took me nearly an hour to sort out the intricacies of that lot. Mm, what about order number AC654-78? That was a real pig. Yes, you have done well. and We are highly pleased. The, um... The question is, um, what about the stuff of mine? I want it back. Hush, boy. All in good time. The question is more, when can you have them back? <laughs> I mean, that sounds like the sort of question I'd be asking if I was in your shoes. Exactly. Yes. yes. Well, it don't seem to be as easy as you would think. It don't. It doesn't. It's the time factor. Time factor? We don't have enough time at our disposal, you see. Knitting woolies for the girls. Oh, that really shouldn't affect our paperwork. We could finish the lot off this week if only we had the time. Mm. You see, getting up in the morning and travelling all the That's way right. to work takes up a lot of time. Mm. And time is what we're short yes, of. Time, time. Yes. If we didn't have the travelling, we could have the paperwork ready. You could. And a slight... Uh, What's the word, Gert? Incentive days. Mm. Incentive. Mm. Like a carrot on a stick. Mm. You walk along in front of a donkey with it. It keeps him going like... Yes, we are talking yes. money, right? I never heard anybody saying anything about money, did you, Days? Not a word. I heard about carrots on sticks. Nothing about money. So, if you had a carrot on a stick, say, and a little less travelling... You could have everything ready by Friday. No problem. Mm. And I am sure we can come to some arrangement that will be agreeable to both sides. Oh, yes. Nice. Yes. Oh, Mr Bristow, I am shattered. I'll have to sit down for a minute. Yes, oh. so. Well, the staff will start arriving soon. I wish you'd be a little more... Careful when you use the stabling machine in the afternoons. Oh. Look at this floor. There's a thing called a waste paper basket, you know. Yes. And you'd better do that window ledge again. It's still covered in dust. Bristow, we must be out of our minds. Two grown men and a kid getting oh. in at the crack of dawn to do the work of cleaning ladies. Have you finished the lampshades? Yes. <laughs> they look quite good. <laughs> How's the knitting? <laughs> Bristow was written by Frank Dickens. Michael Williams was Bristow. Rodney Bewes, Jones. Owen Brenman, Hewitt. Nora Bryan, Mrs. Purdy. Liz Fraser, Gert. Joan Sims, Daisy. John Glover, the station master. Katie Odie, Miss Sunman. And Ian Kelland, the lift boy. David Batley featured as Stokes. And Roger Lloyd Pack as Hickford. The music was composed and performed by John Whitehall. The sound recording was by Graham Harper. The director, Neil Cargill. Thank you.